What's going on guys? Welcome back to Bull Steep Fishing. Hope everyone is having a wonderful, wonderful day. It is a gorgeous day here in Georgia and I could not be happier. I'm, I'm getting that vitamin D on my skin. It feels amazing and I, I, I truly wish I was out fishing, but I'm not. But you know what? It's okay. Um, today I kind of want to do a quick little video on how I set up my anchor wizard with my kayak drag chain. Um, but mainly focus on the Anchor Wizard itself, how I installed it, how I'm running it, so on and so forth. If you watched my previous video of my Kusa FD, I told y'all I'm in the process of rigging it all out for the 2020 season. And there's certain little things that I want to do separate videos on, on how I install it and how I'm going to use it. And that's one right here is the Anchor Wizard. Um, an Anchor Wizard is a phenomenal, phenomenal product. I will not have a kayak in my possession that does not have an Anchor Wizard on it. It is such a useful co or compact and useful tool. Um, it is a really, it's really cool how it's built too. So basically all an Anchor, anchor Wizard is, is a, a winch or a cranking arm or, the, or a winch with a cranking arm on it. Um, but what's cool about this is it locks itself down and it's very easy to use. So basically, if I want to drop my anchor into the water, all I do is just a flick of a wrist and it drops straight down and basically unlocks the locking system inside the anchor wizard. Um, and then you can tighten it down without bringing your anchor all the way up. Now, if you do want to bring your anchor all the way up, it's just a matter of cranking it back up and locking it back in place. There's no separate locks. The whole locking and releasing is all done with this lever and that's what make it so so cool and so unique is this anchor wizard of how it's made and how it's used um it's truly a it's truly a phenomenal product um but before we get into the nuts and bolts of how i install it and how i'm going to use it is i kind of want to touch base on anchoring for a kayak um a lot of anglers and a lot of people they use anchoring system no matter if it's uh anchor drag chains or if it's you know anchor trolley system, power pole, no matter what it is, there's so many out there, but a lot of people, they use a traditional anchor trolley that's attached to the side of your kayak, and then you basically run your anchor line through a little carabiner or circle that's in that anchor trolley, and then basically with an anchor trolley, you can run, you know, if the wind changes directions, you can run your anchor from back to the front or dead in the middle, wherever, you know, to get you positioned where you need to be positioned to fish that current hole or fish that certain area that you're trying to fish. Um, me, I've had anchor trolleys on my kayaks before. Um, I think it's a great product as well, an anchor trolley, but for me, I don't think uh, I'm gonna be using it as much this year um, because I feel like it's just, it's just too much going on with an anchor trolley. You know, you gotta drop the anchor in, uh, in the little, the little at eyelet or whatever you wanna call it, the little circle. Um, and then, you know, you got to run it back up and down. You got to have a, a Z cleat to tie it all off. It's just, it's just too much going on for me. A lot of people like it. Um, it's a very useful tool. I just choose this year not to use it. I, I have extras, um, in my garage. So if I do want to, you know, decide halfway through the season, okay, I want to put a anchor trolley on the side of my kayak. I can, but the way I have this set up this year is how I've used it in the past. And I feel it's going to be very, very useful. So how I rig it up is an anchor drag chain. Um, I'm not saying I'm the founding father of it, but a lot of people still don't know what an anchor drag chain is. Basically what a drag chain is, um, is basically an anchor system, no matter if it's anchor wizard or a clothesline, basically something that holds line, and then it's ran to the back of your kayak, and then off the back, and it's hooked, or, and then instead of a traditional anchor, you use a large piece of log chain. Um, and so what the main purpose of a drag chain is, is basically whenever you're river fishing, you drop um, that drag chain down into the water and it helps you slow down um, where you're not blowing through all your fishing holes while you're in the river. But what's cool about that is you can still use it in a flat water scenario as another anchor system, but you're only anchoring off the back of your kayak. Now you can, if you really want to, um, while you're on the lake, you can always um, pull your line out of the out of the pad eyes and then flip your anchor wizard around and then run it to the front if you want to but that's just you know that's typically what an anchor trolley is used for um, but for me I'm not going to do that this year so let me get everything set up and I will walk you through how I installed it it's very very simple very easy and it's a very useful um, very useful tool when kayak fishing stay tuned guys all right guys so I'm back I have the camera flipped around I'm going to try to run it this way first if it doesn't look good then I'll you know I'll do it the other way but basically, um, there's my anchor wizard right there. I have 
have it attached to the tracks that are on the side of the Cusa FD on the side of the seat. Um, it's basically just attached with two T-bolts on each side of it. And what's cool about Anchor Wizard is um, there's there's a hole on each side of the anchor itself. Um, and you can actually, if you can see this, there's holes in the frame itself of the anchor wizard of the housing unit. And you can actually, you know, adjust your anchor to however you want it. Um, you basically just untighten the T-bolts and then slide them in the other hole to, to get you that right direction that you want your anchor wizard to be shooting out. So basically how I have it rigged up, like I said, it's on the track system next to my seat. I usually run on the right side because that's just, you know, that's how I've always done it. Um, and then I have my anchor line running out of the anchor wizard through pad eyes and all the way to the back of the kayak as you see where my drag chain is um and it's a very like i said guys it's a very simple install to do it how i have it set up basically all you need is four to six pad eyes and you don't necessarily need that depending on what kayak you have but the reason why i have so many pad eyes is I didn't want the line to get interfered with my rod holder. I didn't want my line to get interfered with my latches or for my back hatch. So that's why I've used so many pad eyes. Um, but basically with a pad eye, you can get it really from, you know, any, any kayak. I mean, you can even get it from Walmart these days. Um, there's no, there's no special thing for them. Um, there is two different ways you can install them. You can either install them with a screw, like a self-tapping screw, like I did here, or you can use rivets and there's another screwing method but i just don't you know i don't really you know get into all that but um i usually either use self-tapping screws like i did here or i use rivets um i didn't have a lot of i didn't have enough rivets to do the install so i use self-tapping screws um a lot of people think and I, I still think rivets are a stronger um hold for pad eyes especially when you're running an anchor off but i feel like i'm going to be okay with the self-tapping screws the way i've installed it so basically, um, installing a pad eye is very simple. There's a million videos on it, and I will do a separate video on it if you want me to. Basically, all you do is you position the pad eye where you want it, make two marks, and then you drill a smaller pilot hole. Um, with with self-tapping self screws, you, draw, you drill a smaller pilot hole so that whenever that screw goes into the plastic, um, it'll still have enough meat to grab onto. You don't want to drill a hole too big, or you, want, you don't want to drill a hole that's the same size as the screw or it's kind of pointless because it's just going to hold there. If you drill a smaller pilot hole, pilot hole, it will, you know, bite more of that plastic and give it a tighter, tighter fit when installing a pad eye. Um, rivets, um, read the back of uh, the back of the box on the rivets because they will have um, certain diameters of how to drill your holes. And so that basically the rivet will fit through the hole and then you'll start cranking it as a rivet works. And it'll basically pull together to get a tighter hole that you need. Um, but basically how I did it is, um, those are the two different ways I usually attach pad eyes to my kayak. Like I said, with this and I use self-tapping screws because I didn't have enough rivets and I still have a lot of faith in self-tapping screws the way I've installed them. But basically how I did here is I just ran that line and I put two pad eyes on each side of my rod holder. The reason why I did that, and I, you can see I turned the pad eyes um, to basically make that cord or that, that anchor line run around the rod holder where it does not get in the way of, of your rod sitting in there. Um, and then I ran it all straight on down, just straight back. And sometimes you have to put more pad eyes in your boat to keep it that line exactly the way you're running it. But the way mine ran, it just kind of ran perfectly the way I wanted it to. So I didn't have to put other pad eyes. And then down here, I did the same thing um installing these two pad eyes to get around this back latch where it does not interfere with the back latch operating um that's the reason why i put two pad eyes there i should have probably dropped this pad eye down just a hair bit more um because it is a little bit tight but it still gets the job done and then i ran it straight out the back of um the back of my kayak and i put another pad out here not really sure how i feel about this pad eye I'm just going to be honest with you because this is where all your torque and tension. So if you are floating down the river um, and you do hit a rock and you hit a lot of tension, there's a potential for that pad eye to pop out. Um, that's why a lot of people say use rivets versus self-tapping screws. But the way I have this rigged up, I don't think it's going to be a problem. But also the way I have this pad eye turned, um, I can still run off the back of the boat and I can also drop the drag chain down in between the hole and that'll give it just a little bit more protection if i'm afraid i'm gonna like 
if I'm afraid I'm gonna, you know, rip that pad eye out. I don't think it's gonna be too much of a problem, but still, there's my little security built into it. And basically, like I said earlier, all a drag chain is, is a, a log chain that, you know, loggers use to, you know, get trees up and so on and so forth, like a tow chain. You can go to Home Depot, I think Walmart sells them too, really any home improvement store to pick that up, you can even order it. Um, but basically the way I do it is, I get it, I usually get it in 24 inch sections, so two feet long, and then I cut it in the middle. So if the, cur the current is slower, I can just put the 12 inch one on, uh, but if the current is faster, I can go ahead and put the 24 inch on. Um, and basically, as you see here, this is um, inner tubing for a bicycle tire. Uh, the reason why I did that is, is to, a lot of people use duct tape or some other type of shrink tube. But the reason why I use bicycle tubing, because it was a little bit cheaper, I get more of it for a better price. And basically, you can run it up that chain. And what the tubing does for you is that um, it prevents anything from getting inside that chain to you know become a snag point this just this rubber just helps it go over the rocks and the shoals a little bit better um but basically what's cool about it is going back to the anchor was i'm not sure if you'll be able to see it but basically all you do is turn unlock your anchor wizard and it drops right down and then you just crank it back down to tighten it up and then you're ready to rock and roll and I'm not sure the length of how much line comes in Anchor Wizard. A lot of times, a lot of people will trade out the line that's in the Anchor Wizard and put in like 550 quarter or anything like that. Um, sometimes you can get more line on the spool itself if you do that. Um, but I did that with a clothesline, and it was just a pain in the butt before I had an Anchor Wizard. So, um, I, I mean, I've had great success. I've had this Anchor Wizard for... Uh, three years now and i still have the same line so um phenomenal problem but that's kind of how i have it ran up or rigged up on my kayak so let me get the camera flip back around and i'll talk to you a little bit more about it all right guys so i'm back got the camera flipped around so basically all you need to you know install this setup i have here is an anchor wizard if you choose an anchor wizard um you will need uh pad eyes uh, usually they comes in boxes of six or eight i believe so one box to do you just fine um then you need about depending on how many self-tapping screws come in those boxes um i think i had to get two boxes of them. i think uh i think like four came in each or, or six came in each i had to get i went ahead and got two boxes just being on the safe side but um basically like i said you'll need your pad eyes your self-tapping screws and a lot of times you can find online pad eyes that come with self-tapping screws to kind of, you know, cut down on your budget a little bit. Um, I usually keep stock of self-tapping screws, pad eyes, because pad eyes are so, so useful in kayaks, um, even with boating as well, um, to leash stuff too. So I usually keep a good stock of those. Um, and I just restocked up whenever I got this. I had to get a few more pad eyes, so I went ahead and bought a few more boxes on top of that. But anyways, guys, you'll just need pad eyes, self-tapping screws, your anchor wizard, your log, uh, your log chain, and then just a carabiner attached to that log chain too. Um, like I said, I use a 24-inch or two-foot-long log chain, and I get it cut in the middle. Um, so basically, if the current is slower, then I can put on the 12-inch. If the current is faster, I can put on the 24-inch. Um, and a lot of the times, whenever someone uses a drag chain, they don't realize how useful it is until they actually use it. Uh, because I know I've taken a lot of people down the river or been on the river with a lot of people, and they're literally just blowing by a bunch of good fishing holes because they just they just completely missed it. And this actually slows you down, enjoys your time more on the water, and at the end of the day, catches more fish because you're hitting more spots. Um, and going on to the flat water side of it, I can still use this setup as anchoring on flat water, but I rarely anchor up on flat water. Now that I have a pedal drive, um, I usually just keep myself in the same area with my pedals. And even when I paddled, um, I still paddle sometimes, um, especially in rivers and even in flat water. I just keep my, you know, paddle handy in my lap and I, you know, I kind of keep hold my position that way. Um, power pole is a great, great tool. Um, I absolutely love one. I wish I had one. But at the same time, you know, your pole is only so, you can only get, you know, I think you can get like eight foot poles and 12 foot poles. But if, I mean, if you're in a 15 foot hole in, on Lake Lanier, you know, catching spotted bass on a drop shot, you're going to need something a little bit deeper to hold your position. And that's why this will hold my position. And not only that, that log, that 24 inch log train is very, very heavy. So you technically don't need a traditional ankle anchor using that. 
Um, it all depends on how big your boat is and, and how big you are to, you know, because a lot of times that 24 inch chain will hold me in place even on the lake. Um, and I, I see the, the usefulness of an anchored trolley, but at the same time, um, you know, if you drop this in, yeah, you're going to be spinning around, but you're still holding that somewhat in that general area. So if you're just maintaining the position with the drag chain down and your pedals or your paddle, you should be in good shape. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely going to run this for most of the season. And if I get halfway through the season, you know what? I need an anchor trolley. I'll go ahead and I'll install my anchor trolley straight in my kayak and I'll be ready to rock and roll. But I think this is going to be, you know, my better option. Um, less weight, less stuff to mess with. It keeps it all out of the way. And I think this is a great option, guys. And another thing too, guys, um, kind of give you all a little secret. These, my little setup will be available up on the Bull Seat Fishing page. Um, very, very soon. Yes, I'm giving you a little sneak peek. I will be um, having this an option to buy. I'll have all the pieces, the chain and everything for you to buy so you don't have to go hunt down pad eyes, hunt down line, hunt down log chain. It, it all comes in, in one continuous package, guys. So definitely stay tuned for that, but that's that's kind of just a little secret. It's not fully in motion yet. So, but it, hey, if you do want one, just go ahead and shoot me a message and I'll hook you up. But anyways, guys, thank y'all so much for watching. I really hope y'all enjoyed this. If you follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you have seen a lot in a, I'm, when I say a lot, I mean a lot of content getting pushed out. Uh, just like I said, guys, if you haven't followed me there, go on over to Bulls Deep Fishing on Instagram. Bulls, uh, Bulls Deep Fishing on Facebook, follow me there because that's where you're going to see literally my day-to-day -day updates on different stuff I'm using, different products I'm getting, just stuff I'm doing out today. So definitely go follow me over there. I greatly appreciate it, guys. And guys, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, please just hit that little red box at the bottom, subscribe to my channel. I greatly, greatly appreciate it, guys. Stay classy, keep them tight lines. Stay tuned. I got some more stuff coming your way. Deuces!